Hey guys, Malcolm here from Majestic Skies. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a rundown on this new vehicle I just purchased. It's a 2010 Ford Escape uh, V6 XLT with all-wheel drive. And I'm going to be basically starting a new series where I'm going to be converting it from just a stock SUV into a proper storm chasing vehicle. But in this first episode, I'm just going to be kind of giving you guys a rundown of the car, showing what needs to be fixed, um, some of the quirks of the vehicle, and showing what's really good about it. So, uh, yeah, we'll get started. And, and it's episode two and three. Uh, it's mostly going to be technical repairs. But uh, from here, let's have a look at the car. All right, guys, so you can see this is the car here. As you can see, it has a gold finish. And uh, to be honest, I kind of haggled the guy down in price. I have a feeling he had trouble selling it just because people didn't like the color of the car, which is silliest reason to not buy a car. But, uh, you know, the body paint's in pretty good condition. Maybe just minor scratches here and there, nothing too big. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice car so far. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I already changed the oil on it. That's run repair I already did. A couple of the lights were burnt out, like these uh, back tail lights were burnt out. So I replaced those, and they're all working now. And one of the fog lights was out as well. So that's all been replaced. I'm already kind of being preemptive there. I'll show you the inside as well. Apologize, I need to, just need to get the key out. It's pretty fully loaded, to be honest. Definitely the nicest car I've ever had. Um, so yeah, it has this kind of tan finish, I guess, on the interior. Really nice though. Really clean interior. Um, I'm probably going to be destroying it by mud with mud and everything in the coming months, but <laughs> for now it's really good and that's nice to have. Um, the rear seats do fold flat, so that's nice as well. Maybe using that on occasion to just kind of do ghetto sleeps on the road. I'll show you the front as well. So, it's the front of the car here. Um, yeah, really nice interior. There's auxiliary built in, so that's good when you want to crank the tunage. USB for charging, as well as obviously um, cigarette lighter, charger, 12 volt charger right there. Also has one at the back too. Hope I can show you guys that from there. Hopefully, you can see that. We got 12 volt right here as well. And also quite a lot of storage. You got a normal glove box here. And this is really cool actually. You know, this is probably not that interesting for most people, but lots of storage in here. You can take this out and store even more stuff underneath there. So it's a pretty robust car as far as that goes. One of the things that is broken, unfortunately, is this door. And to be honest, I didn't notice it when I uh, bought it, but. If I lock up here, you can see that uh, this door actually stays locked, but if I unlock, that one does not unlock, and all the other ones do work. And I uh, checked the fuse, but it's not the fuse, so something in the door, but you know, it's not critical that I change that right away, but eventually I'm going to be doing that. Um, also, you know, has power mirrors, um, also has a power driver seat too, which is kind of kind of nice, although... Um, you know, honestly, it's just another thing to break, really, but um, it is nice to have. It's working fine right now, so for now, it's working good. I'll just pray that it doesn't break, because I have a feeling that's going to be expensive to fix. Also has cruise control, which is super helpful when you're, um, you know, doing really long, really long drives. Well, really long highway drives, and your leg gets sore. That was definitely a must-have for me. Steering wheel controls as well, so that's pretty sweet. Your hands off of the knobs over there sometimes. You can see I've already kind of put in my tablet and everything. Usually I use this for my weather radar, and then I'll have my phone here beside for uh, GPS navigation. Um, but I'll show you um, a little bit about the car. Um, let's see if I can clear this info light here. Press reset to clear. There you go. So it's 93,000 kilometers. Uh, I'm Canadian, so it's in kilometers. Um, so pretty low mileage. There's definitely some stuff that was definitely neglected. I mean, most people don't look after their cars as well as they should. But yeah, hopefully you can see that 93,000 kilometers. Not bad pretty low mileage. Um, I know if I fix everything that's wrong with it right now, it's going to be a reliable vehicle. So that's my plan. Um, yeah, it's got a 3.0 liter uh, engine as well for the gas. So, you know, it holds quite a bit of gas in there. Not too bad. It's automatic. Uh, I, I would like a standard, but unfortunately with storm chasing, you know, sometimes it's a little bit annoying to have to fiddle with the uh, shifting gears, especially if you're, um, you know, using radar or just keeping an eye on the radar. It's, it's hard to do all that at once. So, um, yeah. Um, it does also have fog lights as well, as I mentioned, so that is equipped. It's a pretty fully loaded vehicle. The only thing it doesn't have is, like, heated seats, but who really needs that, right? Who really needs heated seats? AC's working, so that's good. Um, and, uh, yeah, from here, that's basically the interior. I mean, you know, basic stuff. Oh, yeah, it has a sunroof as well, which is actually 
a downside if you're a storm chaser, if you know anything. So I'm gonna have to cover up this sunroof. I'll show you guys um, from the outside what I mean about that. Apologize, there just happens to be a helicopter flying over right now, directly over me. But there you can see the sunroof. So uh, yeah, the sunroof's right here. But as you can see, you've got a roof rack right here. So eventually what I'm gonna be doing is uh, basically extending that roof rack out. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna try to find a way to extend this roof rack out over top of the sunroof so that I can protect it from being destroyed by hail because it's gonna happen when I'm storm chasing, no doubt. Um, front windshield I may not cover up um, to protect from hail because you know it's just gonna get destroyed no matter what. Um, but we'll see, I might try to. Well, I'm just not 100% sure quite yet. So anyways, I'll show you guys under the hood now. Show you what else needs to be uh, fixed up. Sorry guys, I apologize for the rough cut here. Just a couple other things I forgot to show before I show you under the hood. So the tires are really, really good condition. Lots of tread left, hopefully you can see that, but there's a ton of tread left on these tires. So they're probably good for another, I don't know, 40,000 kilometers at least um, back as well. They seem like they're all replaced pretty recently. So no issues there whatsoever. Uh, they're all good, as you can see. I won't show you the last one. I'll take my word for it. Uh, not really any rust either, you know. I mean, some of these components, you know, somewhere under the hood looks a little bit more dirty than other places. Or under the wheel wells, I mean, not under the hood. Um, so, you know, it's not perfect, but, um, you know, it's it's in pretty good condition. Not really much signs of rust. And that I'll show you uh, behind the lift gate. I'll show you really quick. So it does have a rear uh, windshield wiper, which is good because sometimes when it's raining really heavily, you can't really see through there very well. And last thing I'll show you before I show you under the hood is that you do have a lot of cargo space. And like I said, these seats do fold flat. So that's quite nice, lots of room. You got your uh, jack under here, if I can show you that. Got your jack under there. And under here you have your spare tire, which also looks like it's in pretty good condition. All right, I'll show you under the hood now. Okay guys, so now we are under the hood. As you can see, things are pretty clean under here. Definitely doesn't look like it's in bad condition. Um, there's definitely been some neglect here and there, but overall the car looks pretty clean and it doesn't have any leaks or anything, so that's good. Um, as you can see, it's the Duratec V6 engine, so it's the better engine. Gives you roughly 240 horsepower, um, six-speed automatic. Uh, battery's on the smaller side, but I'm sure it'll be fine for me. I'll see if I need to up that to a higher size eventually, but yeah, I'll show you what definitely needs to be done. Um, the coolant over here is definitely bad. So I need to do a coolant flush on it. In the next episode, I will likely do that as well as change the transmission fluid because one of the few you know driving issues I notice is um, when I first start the car, it will occasionally um, have the transmission slip. Usually when it's a cold start, you know, when it hasn't fully warmed up and whatnot, um, the transmission will slip. But you know, I'm gonna fill up the transmission fluid. It's simple enough. Um, you know, dump out as much as I can out of the bottom, and I'm probably gonna change a good three times because. I don't really have the tools to do a proper transmission flush, but to do a simple change, it's not too much work. So um, yeah, I'm gonna do maybe three changes, just kind of dilute the you know old oil in there. So other than that, um, what else needs to be changed is the spark plugs. They're working okay right now. They'd probably be good for another, uh, I don't know, 30,000 kilometers or so. But while I'm doing all this work, I might as well change them, see what kind of condition they're in. And to be honest, that's probably going to be one of the most in-depth um, repair jobs I need to do on this. And the reason for that is I have to actually take off, I'll show you right here, this is easy enough to take off. I'll have to take off the front cover and, uh, you know, i got the air filter there. So this all needs to come off. But on top of that, I also need to take off this uh, manifold. So this entire manifold needs to come off. So there's actually quite a bit that needs to be disassembled to get to the back spark plugs which I think I can feel a little bit there. Yeah, I can feel them, but it's definitely blocked by this manifold, so you can't get them out unless you remove that. The front ones are not too bad. You can probably get them just by removing this uh, part right here, the cover for the engine with the air filter. Um, so, you know, that part isn't gonna be too bad, but the rear is definitely gonna be a bit, a little bit in depth, so um, yeah. Uh, one thing I did do, I think I already mentioned this actually, but oil change has been done, so it needed an oil change. But I, I did that right away, literally within a day of buying it, because it needed to be changed. One of the nice things about this car, though, is it does alert you when you need an oil change. It's new enough to do that. I apologize, it's kind of stuck there, but um, yeah, it does alert you when you need an oil change. So that's actually a nice feature. I shouldn't need to worry about my uh, oil changes on the road. I should be able to just go, okay, I need to do an oil change, and just quickly do it uh, wherever I end up. 
Um, other than that, most things are working just fine. Like I said, air conditioners work. It might need to be charged up a little bit, but you know, I'm going to do that next summer when it gets hot again. Um, other than that, you know, washer fluid needs to be topped up, but that's not really anything. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Other than that, that's going to be the end of episode one of this build vlog. Um, episode two and three are going to be going into maintenance and repairs. So if you're not into that kind of thing, if it just bored you to death when I popped the hood, feel free to skip those. Episode four and onward are all going to be kind of uh, customizing this vehicle as a storm chasing vehicle. You know, covering the sunroof, um, adding whatever accessories I need to monitor the weather. You know, things like an anemometer and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, keep an eye out for more episodes coming very soon.